In this video, I want to show you how it is that you can follow a circular path by using some generated code from Simulink. In order to do this, I'm going to show you this tutorial that utilizes the Simulink model that's provided already. One thing that you'll definitely want to do is go ahead and fire up MATLAB if you have it. So I've got MATLAB started here, and I'm inside now. Sprinkle my cat vehicle workspace, source, cat vehicle. And then inside of the cat vehicle, I have a directory called Simulink. And inside here, there's a file called cat vehicle underscore Hoffman follower. So I'm going to go ahead and open up this Simulink model. This model provides some information about how I can use a high powered uh, computation tool like MATLAB Simulink in order to do control level decisions rather than having to write that code myself. Just like with any, I'm going to try to zoom in a little bit here, uh, just like with any uh, control algorithm, you have some inputs and some outputs. And so the output of our system we can see here. Let me see if I can go away from zoom mode here. So the output of my system is here. This component is going to be producing command velocity messages that go to the cat vehicle namespace. And there are kind geometry messages twist. So this part of the model is creating a twist message and providing the x value linear.x and the angular.z values. It's subscribing to information from the odometry topic. So cat vehicle slash odometry is being uh, passed in as a message. And then we extract information from there. So we can see here uh, that we're getting x and y from the pose slash, uh, pose dot position. And we're getting w, x, y, and z from pose dot orientation. This is giving us information about, uh, in a quaternion form, what the angles are of the vehicle and in x, y position, uh, exactly what the location of the center of the vehicle is. Um, so what the Hoffman controller is going to be doing is it's going to be taking a circle which comes from this set desired path function here. Uh, I have a circle which is centered at uh, a circle of radius 36.6 .6, and I want my starting position to be 0, 0. Uh, I could also do it with a straight line but I'm not going to do that here. I'm selecting path 1 uh, which the input number 1 here comes from the circle. So you can try it by running it on the straight path if you want to. So one thing that I could do is I can actually just run the Simulink model, and that's what I want to do first. Let's start up the cat vehicle underscore neighborhood. Let me just check. Is that what we're doing here? Oh, skid pan. Let's run it on the cat vehicle underscore skid pan. Cat vehicle underscore skid pan dot launch. And if you haven't uh, gone into your workspace and sourced the workspace, workspace directory, then uh, that's not going to work for you. So make sure you source uh, bash RC, but just like you always would before you run anything in ROS. So now I didn't see anything red flash by, which means we've probably experienced success. Instead of running rviz, what I want to run is gazebo. So I'm going to start up the gazebo client here. And then I can see that the car is sitting here, and it's not really doing anything. Um, in order to see what it is that we're going to do, I want to show you a little bit more in MATLAB uh, about what the circular path means. So if you look at circular path prototype.m, I'm just going to run this uh, circular path prototype and we'll be able to see a kind of an interesting diagram here. So this diagram describes a circle which starts at 0, 0, and then this circle allows us to see exactly how we'd want to drive the car depending on where we are. So for example, if we find ourselves at this point zero, 00, we want to drive this way. And if we find ourselves over here, just a little bit off the circle, then the tangent to the circle is going to bring us back. And that's what this controller does. This is based on uh, a controller uh, developed by a guy named Gabe Hoffman when he was at Stanford working on the DARPA Grand Challenge with uh, Team Stanley um, from Stanford. And so we took his controller and adapted it to the path that we're passing in here to show exactly how it is that we could leverage some advanced control in order to follow a path. It's just that our path is really simple. It's this circle. So we're using a similar kind of uh, method to this inside of the Simulink model. So let me show you what that means here. Inside of uh, the Hoffman controller, we're receiving information about the path here. And so this path is telling us uh, a long vertex of, or a long uh, vector of information about where we are. 
So the path is being passed in here. And also our current x, y position is being passed in. So we know that uh, we want to be on path uh, on the path. We want to have our x, y, and z positions. Um, and then depending on where we are, we're going to start to drive around. So this function, which calculates our error from the path, is going to look along the entire length of the path and find the point on the path that we're closest to. So it returns the index of that point, and that gives us the x and y location on the path, as well as uh, the angle on the path, phi, that we should be facing. So based on finding the x and y position of the path that we're closest to, and the angle that we should be heading, we can now calculate the error. So let me show you what that looks like uh, on the diagram because it's going to make a lot more sense if you can see the diagram here, which we've taken uh, from a paper that implements the Hoffman controller. So you can see the angle delta here is the angle of the tire. Here's our vehicle, which is off the path somewhere. This value E, the vector, um, is the error that we have from the closest point to the path to our center of mass. And the angle phi is telling us how much we are off so it's aligned with our velocity vector. It's telling us how much we're off if we want to align ourselves to the path. So the Hoffman controller implements, implements this somewhat straightforward uh, computation here, which we use some gain k and multiply it by our error vector, divide it by our velocity, and take the arctangent of that value, and then add it to our current offset value phi. So this tells us how we need to change our tire angle based on this equation. And so we've implemented this phi of t plus arctan of ke divided by v, exactly like it's noted there. So down here, we're calculating, this is where we're calculating e. Uh, and so you can see we calculate e, and then we have our gain k. Uh, so we, our inputs here are k, the error vector e, our velocity, and phi. And you can see those are the same values that we had here, phi, k, e, and v. So inside now, uh, sorry, inside this calculate delta function, we take phi, and we see, well, if it's less than minus pi, we want to add 2 pi to it. And if it's greater than pi, we want to subtract 2 pi from it. Uh, and so that normalizes our value of phi. Now we can see here that we just take a tan 2 of k times e divided by v, and then we add phi to it to come up with our commanded value of delta. And then we pass that along uh, to the desired tire angle that we have. So that's, we here we pass our delta out, so this is our desired tire angle. And V out passes um, the desired velocity. So I think we're just passing through the reference velocity here. Uh, yeah, actually that's almost true. Um, here's where the velocity is being passed out. And so if we look at everything connected to here, if our error is greater than 4 meters, um, then we set our output velocity equal to zero. So this stops us from uh, executing the car if we're too far away from the path. So what I want to do next is just run this. Uh, I've taken you through a little bit of the logic there. Uh, but next, oh, and by the way, I'm also using this uh, quaternion uh, value here inside of um, the MATLAB toolbox for aerospace, the aerospace block set. So this takes W, X, Y, and Z and converts that quaternion into a rotation angle and we pass out the yaw angle. So the yaw angle is the uh, direction in which the vehicle happens to be pointing. So let's come back and look at gazebo. We see ourselves sitting here. And we can also look at um, our Simulink model. I think if uh, we're subscribing to odometry and we're publishing command velocity, so I'm just going to push play here, and I think we should see the car start to drive. Let's see. Oh, there we go. And so now the car is going to be moving around. I did not have to compile any code in order to make this work. Uh, I just opened up the Simulink model and I pushed play. And so we're going to see the car drive around here. And it's, it's basically going to drive around in a circle. It'll do it as long as we want it to, um, as long as we're willing to sit here. Now one thing that is worth noticing is that our real-time factor here is uh, between, say, 0.7 and 0.9. Uh, it's moving around. The real-time factor tells you essentially how much your machine is struggling in order to keep up with the computational demand of simulating the test bed and executing it. You might be able to save some of your real-time factor 
um, if you run some of these components on another machine. So refer to a, uh, you know, your, your real-time factor may actually seem much more worse than this, or much worse than this, uh, depending on how much computational power you have or whether your GPU is able to, to, to offload some of the computation for the ray tracing. Um, so the car is just going to drive around and around and around, and it's, it's kind of interesting to, to sit in and watch here. Um, and so if you're looking for something to do to, to interpret sensor data, um, you can keep in mind that this has, uh, at the point zero, zero, um, it has some interesting information. Uh, and so why don't we go ahead now and create, for example, we'll put a house right here. So now we should be able to interpret some sensor data from that house. And I could put a, a Jersey barrier here, for example. So we should see information from that Jersey barrier while we're driving around. Um, so if there's some stuff that you'd like to, to play around with and kind of see whether your sensors can detect it or whether they can't, um, this is a great way to, to sort of have the car driving around in a circle. And then you can add, I don't know what a mud box is. Oh, I guess it's that. Um, you know, this is a way to, to sort of throw some stuff out here. Uh, if it turns out that it's in the path of the car, then the car should stop. Let's see, actually see if I can make that happen. I'll put a house here. We'll see how close we are to the house when the car comes around. We got kind of close to the sign, but we're going to be really close to the house, and it slams on its brakes to keep from, from hitting it. Um, so we're going to move the house a little bit out of the way here, if I can select it. I'm going to select the little arrows here. Which evidently is uh, my computer is not cooperating with me here. I don't know why I'm not able to select uh, the house. Let's try it again. Yeah, I just had to try it a bunch of times, I guess. And now I've moved the house out of the way and the car will start to drive again. So that's because of the, the, the obstacle stopper controller that we have uh, tries to prevent uh, the vehicle from crashing into something. So if you have a pretty low velocity set, um, we've set the threshold for the obstacle stopper to be such that uh, it'll um, stop you before you hit something too much. This is taking a really long time to zoom back out here. You can see again my real-time factor is kind of creeping up, so it's now closer to 0.6 or 0.7. So by the way, if you've created a world like this and you want to use it in Gazebo, uh, we'll have a tutorial later that describes how it is that you can save this world uh, so that you can do um, some interesting things and start it up and run it from a, from a different tutorial. The next thing that we're going to show, the next tutorial, is going to start from this point, but we're going to compile the code that we had in Simulink and show you how to run that, which should give you a slightly better real-time factor.